Hey, this is Jeremy, and today we're going to be talking about communicable and infectious diseases and the PPE that we can wear and the precautions we need to follow to prevent us from getting those uh, those diseases. So to start off with, we need to understand that uh, what an infectious disease and a communicable disease is. Now, an infectious disease is uh, that that's caused by a growth that occurs within an organism or within the body. And that, some examples of that are going to be the common cold, the flu, uh, urinary tract infection, stomach viruses. It's an infection of the body, essentially. There is something that, uh, that is infected due to uh, another organism, and our body is trying to going to attempt to fight those things. Now, a communicable disease is a disease that can be spread from one human to another or from one species to another. So an example of that would be like swine flu. Swine flu originated in, in pigs, uh, allegedly. So what we have is that that is a communicable disease. The common, the, the common cold, uh, that is going to be a communicable disease. The flu is a communicable disease. But every single thing that I just named off is also an infectious disease. Not every, uh, not every infectious disease is communicable, but every communicable disease is infectious. A urinary, fra urinary tract infection, that is going to be something that is going to be near impossible to transmit from one person to another. Um, and and that's, that's why that would be an infectious disease, but not necessarily a communicable disease. Now, uh, a couple examples, uh, more examples of a communicable disease would be like Ebola, the hantavirus, uh, HIV and AIDS, uh, and all the hepatitis. They are all communicable, and that means that they can spread uh, from one person or uh, species to another. Now, the best way that we can protect ourselves is going to be by following standard precautions. Now, standard precautions, is, it's essentially the standard for things that you, you need to do to protect yourself and protect those around you um, and to keep yourself from getting sick. So the number one rule uh, is always going to be to wash your hands. You need to wash your hands after you take your gloves off. You need to wash your hands before and after every single patient contact after you go use the restroom. And all that is because, uh, you know, our hands because we touch things uh, that's going to be a very uh, that's going to be a very simple route for us to be able to acquire diseases and to also spread our own and we don't necessarily need that for our patients especially with some of the patients that we come in contact with that are really really sick um, and that that's why washing your hands is really important after that uh, you need to wear gloves um, you need to wear gloves anytime you're you're coming in contact with the patient at all, um, and especially if you're in a fluid or other substance that um, that you know does pose the risk of carrying a disease. Now you should also wash your hands after you remove your gloves, and that's important to remember as well. Gowns. Gowns are used whenever you're going to be exposed to uh, to a substance that is is very copious, uh, so you have copious amounts of blood or vomit. Uh, anything where you have any type of body fluids or other object that may be contaminated that you uh, you don't necessarily want getting on your clothes, you need to consider wearing a gown. Now it may not be practical in, uh, in our line of work a lot of time, but you still need to consider it uh, and especially consider it for the test. Now a uh, mask and eye protection. Uh, that's going to be really important with anything that can involve uh, splashing or spray. So if you have somebody with an arterial bleed, you should be wearing a face shield or an eye shield. Um, if you have somebody that you're suctioning or you're performing an intubation on, you really need to be wearing a mask or a face shield. Um, and that's just, again, to protect you from the splashing or the, the, the sprays of blood or other substance that could be there. Um, and that, that's just to protect yourself. Now, uh, we also have the HEPA respirators or the N95 masks. Those are for ourselves whenever we are coming in contact with uh, somebody with tuberculosis. And tuberculosis is an airborne disease. And so what the HEPA respirator does is it kind of acts as a filter. 
you know, anytime you come in contact with somebody who uh, who does have uh, TB or tuberculosis, you need to be placing a surgical mask on the patient, and you need to be placing an N95 mask on yourself, and that is that is important, and uh, that that is again going to be a test question. Now, um, any time that your patient is going to come in contact with anything, whether it be the stretcher, the seat, the cardiac monitor, your um, your pulse ox you need to be able to wash that uh, that object off and separate uh, and to kind of get the, the patient's potential contaminants off to keep it from spreading from one patient to the next or even to you and so um, so wash your stretcher wash your equipment wash your truck after every single patient contact handle all linens so like your sheets your blankets your towels your rags handle anything that your patient has uh, with extreme care uh, it has the potential for having bodily fluid on it whether it be urine blood um, in any substance and so tr treat it accordingly and keep it from coming in contact with any other linens that you may be using um, because then again you know uh, contamination can happen you always need to uh, also reca never, ever, ever recap your needles. Anytime you have a sharp object, as soon as you are done using it, it needs to go straight into the sharp container. You don't need to recap it. As soon as you're done, you're done. And you, if you do need to uh, perform that same activity again, whether it be with a scalpel or with uh, with a syringe or an IV needle, uh, you need to go get a new syringe. You need to go get a new IV needle. You need to go get a new scalpel. Um, that way, you're you're minimizing again the potential risk for contamination. And you always need to use a puncture proof or puncture resistant sharp container. So your IVs all need to go in sharp containers. Your your scalpels all need to go in sharp containers. And if your equipment, uh, such as your IV or your scalpel, has any safety features, you need to utilize those as well. And that's just going to prevent uh, prevent any accidental sticks or any further incident from occurring. Uh, an example would be um, if you get an IV and it has a button that you press that retracts the needle inside of a chamber. Well, that can be really helpful. Um, so be familiar with your equipment. Uh, be familiar with standard precautions and how to protect yourself. And uh, I hope you understand that uh, the difference between communicable diseases and infectious diseases. All communicable diseases are infectious, but not all infectious diseases are communicable, which pretty much means not every infection I have is something that I can give to somebody else and that's important and that's uh those are the big takeaways from uh, communicable versus infectious disease and the PPE that we use to protect ourselves